hi there my friends welcome to my youtube channel just finished a little project and i thought what shall i do now before i start another bigger project and i thought i know i would like to decorate this little sketchbook it's by arteza it's a cold press paper uh, the page size is 5.5 inches by 3.5 inches that's 14 by 9 centimetres so it's got a little elasticated thing to keep it closed when you're out travelling let's open it up inside you get one of these just gives you an idea on some of the other Arteza products that they do I don't have any of those just got these sketchbooks I've not used this one before so be interesting to give it a go but it's a bit bland isn't it a bit boring to look at and it's coated with it's well it's covered with a canvas so and apparently you can decorate this so I will do a I'll sketch on it and paint on it and see how it goes so a little room for your details I'd probably just put a phone number on there not an address and in the back there's a little pocket expandable pocket that you can keep little mementos in or yeah stickers or things like that so let's have a look there are how many sheets 80 pages so it's double-sided so 40 sheets and you can paint or draw on either side but to start off with I will open it up let's hope it opens up completely yep so it does it opens up flat which is nice so that's going to be ideal for out sketching but it also means that I can flip it over and I can decorate I can paint or whatever this side because it's canvas so I will go and get a sketch onto this um, and we'll take it from there see you in a bit and back so had to scroll through some photos that I took a while ago at Chester Zoo found one of a rhino laying down so I thought that's ideal so sketched on with an, a 5B, Derwent 5B so nice and soft and popped in some basic shapes now I'm not kidding but trying to sketch on this canvas <laughs> was like doing a magic eye test because it was really really I don't know it's just something about the weave uh, yeah it was just affecting my eyes so I had to turn off the studio lighting and sketch it out in sort of quite a darkened room to stop my eyes going funny but it's on uh, the soft pencil 5B went on really nicely um, yeah it's not smudging or anything not that I've noticed so I didn't know what to uh, what paint but I've decided I'm going to go with gouache so I'll go and get my gouache supplies and I'll see you back in a bit okay i'm back with some paint supplies so let's get a palette set up just move that out of the way for a minute and pull this over now what this is is just a glass chopping board you can get these from sort of supermarkets and places like that so that's all it is it's sort of a tempered glass chopping board and we're going to use this as our palette today so let me have a look see where I've put that so this is just a piece of cellulose sponge it's what you use for cleaning and things like that all I'm going to do is pop that there I'm just going to submerge this in water take it out give it a squeeze So that it's nice and damp so you don't want it wringing wet okay and place this on the on the board like that then get some kitchen roll 
and you're going to place the kitchen roll on top of the sponge. I'm doing all of this to stop my paints drying out too much when I'm using them. I'm just going to get a little spritzer bottle here. Uh, this one's by Derwent, I can't get the lid off, there you go. This one's just got water in it and then give that a quick misting down. And I'll be putting my gouache paints on here and it should keep them wet for longer and then mix it on the glass bit at the bottom. So I'm going to move that out of the way now. It's taking up uh, quite a bit of room. Obviously you wouldn't use this for plain air painting or anything like that but I'll make a video of setting up a plain air palette at another point. So over to the gouache, going to use the Artex Jelly Gouache today and if you're having problems with your gouache, especially the jelly gouache drying out, I do have a video on the channel about how to keep them like this. Yeah. So choosing colours, let's just plop some onto the palette. So I'm going to use it, it looks dirty but it's actually clean, palette knife. I'm just going to transfer some colours over onto here. Move the palette back out of the way. Can't get it all in view, but uh, I can't really zoom in now. She's going to lose the palette as well. I'm not using a big brush. Just want to get some paint on this canvas and see how it reacts. This is a Crafter's Choice, number six by Royal and Langnickel, and it's a filbert, meaning it's a flat but with a rounded end. Okay, so as with all watercolour mediums, I always tend to hold a piece of tissue in the left hand. And I'm going to be taking the paint, bringing it to the palette to mix, and then putting it on the canvas. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in just so but you'll know what I'm doing. Let's have a look, zoom this in a bit. There you go. Ooh, that's looking strange isn't it maybe a better with zooming out just a little bit because it's it's it is playing with the weave of the canvas a little bit once there's paint on here then i'll go in again so here we go with the best bit the adding the paint to the canvas so i've already shown you how to set up your palette if you'd like to work with gouache this way it's so simple working this way when you're working in a studio setting because the paints do stay wet a lot longer than they would if you were just taking them out of the pan and putting them in a normal palette so i'm just applying some darks and i thought i'd just speed this up and do a voiceover for this painting section just to well speed things along a little bit because you know there's no fun in watching paint dry so so the I found the canvas uh, cover of the sketchbook to be quite easy to work on I don't know if it's been primed with anything I didn't look into that but as it's it's set up to be a suitable painting um, board surface I should say so it's this taking the gouache very nicely didn't have any problems with it at all the tooth of the canvas is quite deep so in some areas I did do a little bit of stippling to push the pigment right into the weave but overall I was really really happy with it and I'm going to be ordering some more canvas covered sketchbooks and having a play with them but with different mediums as well. So just going on with some lights now if you've not worked with gouache before it's a opaque watercolour that's really all it is an opaque watercolour and you can mix glycerin in things like that to stop it from drying out so quickly as i said there is a video on my youtube channel explaining how i keep the paints moist within the artex uh, palette because they do have a tendency of drying out but um, never mind but this arteza sketchbook will be going into my field bag and I'll be taking it out and about. 
Uh, I don't know if you just saw that, but I just misted the paints and the paints on the sponge as well. Just and that's just with water. I just all that that's all there is in that little bottle is just some distilled water. So I do that periodically throughout the painting uh, process. Keep spritzing the paints as I work. Now you could give the canvas that you're working on a light spritz of water as well. But I didn't want to do this on um, this case. Beans, I've never worked on one of these sketchbook covers before. I didn't want to oversaturate it with moisture and then it take days and days and days to completely dry out. You can, to speed up the painting, if you do find your sketchbook cover getting too waterlogged, you can dry it out over a radiator, but just not on too hot. Now, the colours here aren't looking true as such i was having difficulty with my filming <laughs> surprise surprise and i think it's because of that green mat underneath because obviously you can see the finished sketchbook painting that i've put on screen and the colors are very different these colors that i'm putting on now were more beigey tones yeah they were they were less yellowy as they're showing up when well, in actual fact they're showing up a little bit green on my monitor I, I guess it's whatever monitor you're viewing on but uh, they were a, more of an earthy tone to them but all I'm trying to do I'm trying to get my lights and my darks in then I'll go for the mid-tones get them all in once that's dry start glazing colors on top now you can glaze slightly with gouache I know it has a tendency to lift off the paper or, or canvas, whatever surface you're working on, when you apply wet layers over the top. Now to avoid that, just work with a very gentle hand, very light hand, um, and very fine brush strokes. Don't try and scrub into paint because it will lift, the, the layers underneath will lift away. So it's not a permanent fixture as such but towards the end of the video I'll show you how you can protect um, your painting at the end making it waterproof and then it will last a long long time so speeding forward a little bit there just cut it cut out a tiny bit uh, adding some more coats sorry about my hair wafting into view again so a little bit more going on and it's just about building up just building up the structure of the animal. Keep in mind the skeletal structure, the muscular structure of whatever animal um, or subject you're painting. And just keep that in mind as you're applying the, the coats of paint. What I did do is the image that I was actually working from, one of my own reference images, I blurred it out slightly. And the reason I did that to begin with is I just wanted the blocks of colour where the lights were where the darks were just to build up that form I didn't want to get bogged down with any detail at this stage in actual fact using a canvas as a base and this small really prevented me from getting lots of detail in and so it's actually a freeing experience it was really enjoyable and obviously working on something this small, you can just turn it round on your work surface, not a problem at all, which was really nice as well. And it was just nice to have a break from working on bigger projects on my easel. Just a break, just made a change, and this is just for fun. This is just something for me. That colour looks so lemony uh, in colour, and it, it really wasn't. It's a light beige now on the palette to the right it is a tempered glass chopping board and it has got quite um, a textured surface which I found lovely to work from what you could do if you don't like working on something clear where you can see what's underneath it you can just pop a piece of white paper a piece of white print paper will do underneath and I do do that later on in the video So just going in, adding more darks, lights and mid-tones and they, the colours actually blended really nicely and if I added, if they didn't blend, if I was left with some hard lines somewhere that I didn't want, I simply dipped my brush into a little bit of distilled water and blended the edges out and 
yeah no no problems at all except working around the spine of the sketchbook it wasn't problematic it was just awkward didn't know how to hold it just to get into the the creases so the, obviously there's a crease running down either side of the spine where the the pay the actual book folds back on itself and I just yeah <laughs> juggling with the sketchbook just to get those areas filled in but what an enjoyable process I painted this over two days because I was busy doing other things so I gave myself you know an hour or so on day one to get it sketched out uh, well decide what I was going to paint and then sketch out what I decided and then just to get the base coats on and get everything blocked in and then the that was sort of the end of the first day it's looking very green but I assure you it was more beige tones and then I believe this is day two or this might be the remainder of day one because I actually blocked some of the background in as well okay piece of white paper going underneath and that didn't even help with the filming either but there you go it'll all be sorted out when I move into the new studio I've just been working in there for the past half an hour putting some more boarding up so still waiting for the electrics to go in but they they will be going in hopefully soon oh, I'm just itching to get in there now if anybody doesn't know I've renovating a garage into a studio doing the work myself but I'm just having to have somebody in to fit all the electrics so that shows you how far I've got um, false floors gone down the ceilings gone in somewhat um, all the walls are insulated now the boards have gone up I've done all that and now just doing a few bits and bobs around the work area and waiting for the electrician to be able to pop round, which is a family friend so um, I can't grumble because I know they're busy okay so just blocking in some of the background getting those darks in and obviously with gouache it's opaque so you can you can work light over dark not a problem and as I work my way down to the foreground on this side of the rhino um, I will be working dark to light and you'll see that so you, with gouache you can work light to dark, dark to light, both ways. Really enjoyable medium. And fast forward a little bit more. Oh, it just went on so nicely. But with me ha not having primed the um, surface underneath, when when now when you hold the sketchbook itself and tip it backwards and forwards as it catches the light you can see that some of the weave has been missed with the, with the paint but that's fine it's a sketchbook it's uh, not going to look like this forever <laughs> so in and out of a field bag and hopefully once I get some sketches in there I'll be sharing those with you as well I might just keep this sketchbook just for sketching at Chester Zoo, I'm not sure yet. I say that and then it'll end up going to one of the bird reserves or something as well you watch. But I will do another one because I enjoyed this one so much. It was yeah, really nice treat to sit back and chill. Sorry about my head going into frame. I obviously haven't learnt much since my last video where my wisps of hair were flitting backwards and forwards. But once in the new studio, there's going to be a lot more room. The lighting and the filming situation is going to be different as well. So hopefully it'll be uh, better than it is now. But at least I'm getting some videos out there. And thank you for everybody who's subscribing and liking and sharing. Okay, I'm just going in with the Faber-Castell Sepia Fine Liner. Just to get a little bit of detail around the eye. Because there seemed to be go a lot going on in the rest of the rhino and not a lot happening in the face. And I didn't want to add detail with the brush because I, I just get carried away. Um, and I know it would end up too detailed. And it, it's just a sketchbook. It's just something for me. So I just wanted to give, give him a little bit of personality. Um, get a little bit more texture in there. And I thought, yep, yeah, fine liners, great. These fine liners, I will put them in the description they are um, 
water based but they're water resistant so once they're on there they're on there for good so you can't wash them off or anything like that uh, they're light fast and permanent so just a few expressive lines not too much obviously you can see the finished painting and you can see that I didn't do an awful lot just a little bit And you can see nicely there on the right hand side how well the, the light greens have gone over the dark greens. So filling in a little bit more space. And just popping in some little lilac flowers. They weren't in the reference image but I thought just add a little bit of colour to him. He's looking very green isn't he? I'm sorry about that. But the photograph of the finished item is true to life. You can actually see the weave, um, the background on the right hand side, how it's just catching the light where the paint hadn't gone completely in. Okay, and we're back. It's the following day. Everything's really dried out, uh, which it would be. Just wanted to make, with it being gouache, gouache drives quickly, but I just wanted to make sure the canvas underneath <coughs> excuse me I'd completely dried out so now the next step now is obviously we could leave it like that and it'd look nice on a shelf but it's gouache so it's water reactive so we don't want it getting wet this sketchbook is going to be thrown into the field bag to go out sketching with and things like that so it will get damaged so we need to protect it and what we're going to do we're going to wax it and this is Dorland's wax medium I'll pop it in the uh, description and all you do is take some out let's start on the back I'll have to work my way around these little this little strap get a little bit of it it has got petroleum in it so you make sure you wash your hands after you've used make sure you're using clean hands as well and you just start by applying some. Um, now you need to cover the whole area that's been painted so along the edges as well quite a liberal coat of it and when that's all covered I will leave it for 24 hours to cure and then I'll take a lint free cloth to, at some point tomorrow and buff it and then I'll show you when it's all finished. So you buff it just to um, get it to a sheen and take off the opacity. But as you can see, it's not moving any of the gouache because this is um, wax-based product and obviously the gouache is water-based product. Okay, so you just carry on going round. Might take some time. And then that will be it and it will be ready for use once this is cured okay they so just go around the whole painted area with the Dorland's wax or any other wax medium but this is my preferred one and there you have him just a little rhino in gouache on the cover of a sketchbook. The cotton canvas cover worked really well. It accepted the gouache brilliantly. I left the sketchbook for 24 hours. Um, I was going to buff it to give it a sheen with a lint-free cloth, but it's still quite tacky in areas. So I'm going to leave it for another 24 hours and I'll probably give it a rub over then. And it just gives it a little bit of an added sheen doesn't protect the cover any more than it already is now it's got the wax on and then it will be good to go thank you for watching the video I uh, hope everyone's keeping safe stay creative and I'll be back soon with another video take care bye